It was a great year for programming, especially on Netflix. I had no idea that American Vandal Season 2 was dropping in 2018, so I was pleasantly surprised in seeing the smart, outrageous mockumentary once again. Season 2 was so good that it gave me a cathartic and rewarding experience, and it's surprisingly inspirational. And the character of Demarcus Tillman is a godsend to all of fiction. I wish he was a real person. Netflix also gave me a heaping dose of Richard Madden in the suspenseful thriller Bodyguard. Rob Stark was my favorite in Game of Thrones, so to see him in action with that full Scottish accent and powerful acting chops, I was completely blown away. This man deserves an award. Great show. It's a viewing experience that's, that's very intense. By far, that opening train sequence is some of the most tense I've ever felt watching a TV show. So Richard Madden does a great job in his acting and his portrayal, and it really is quite beautiful. And then there is the sci-fi roller coaster cyberpunk extravaganza that is Altered Carbon. Um, not the best name, but Steven recommended it, and my god, what a visual feast. Big ideas, excellent execution. This show was that sci-fi epic that I craved this year, and I loved it. What a ridiculous, over-the-top television experience. And then toward the end of the year, we got the fantastic Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Maybe this is the year where witchcraft and Satanism is in, but regardless, this show was funny, it was creepy, and it was lots of fun. Kiernan Shipka is witty and charming. Her character is empowering, especially in a world of a patriotic, a traditionalist, satanic, orthodox upbringing. So Sabrina is wickedly progressive as she just kind of tries to live her own life. And it has a great cast with a chilling atmosphere. I had a lot of fun watching this show. Witty banter with occult symbolism, and then everything you could possibly need from an endearing cast. What could be better? Besides Netflix, there was also a lot of good anime that I watched. This was the year where I finally sat down and watched all of Dragon Ball Super, actually getting to the point where the season finale occurred, and that was something special. Dragon Ball has always been something really important to me growing up as a child, so now being able to see it unleashed once more, it just felt so good. There really was magic in watching these fight sequences and seeing my favorite characters come to fruition once again. I literally also just finished Goblin Slayer, which I heard a lot of hype about, specifically being compared to Doom Guy from the Doom franchise, an unrelenting force that is only focused on one thing, and that is the gruesome deaths of the goblins that exist in this plane. The fight sequences are gruesome and bloody. There's some really intense scenes, so this is not for kids. And it's just something that, though it's violent and brutal, it has moments where it's really uplifting. The final episode was also very satisfying. I loved it. Ooh, then we got Devilman Crybaby, which became my obsession during the first part of the year. Filled with bizarre imagery, sketchy animation, and groovy tunes, this was so much going on from apocalyptic horror to gratuitous violence and nudity, but it also encompassed a deeper story of metamorphosis, acceptance, and heroism. Plus, there were some sick raps in this show. With an ending on par with the end of Evangelion, this show stayed with me for many weeks after I had finished it. I'm still mad about it. This show fucked me up. And then we had the perfect season of My Hero Academia. I've talked about this anime at nauseum for many times now, so please go to some of my other videos about this, but just very clearly, I wanna state, My Hero Academia season three was the best anime of 2018. Everything that I wanted to happen happened. There were some great fight sequences. There were some great laugh out loud, cry out loud moments. This was just beautiful storytelling. We got Mirio, we got All for One, we got Bakugo versus Midoriya part two. There were just so many outstanding moments and the music was gorgeous. So do yourselves a favor and watch this show. And finally, The Haunting of Hill House. Have you ever had an experience where you watch something that profoundly scared you to your very core, but at the same time made you feel so, so sad? This is one of those perfect shows that comes every now and then. And I'm not just talking about some of the fantastic camera work or some of the cool creepy factors, but I'm talking about the story enveloped in this horror that is actually some of the most uplifting and bittersweet moments on television I have ever seen. 
the show is emotionally frustrating because you become so immersed in the Crane family's struggles and hardships, which makes the tragedy and the trauma that they go through hit you so much harder. It's so fucked up and heartbreaking. This is a story about family, and it made me want to hug my sisters right after I watched it. It's so much more than a silly horror story. It's cathartic. It's a story about forgiveness and love. And it teaches that forgiveness is warm. To love completely. That's all that matters. All the rest is confetti. It teaches that the only thing in life that matters is family. And it made me want to spend more time with my family. And that's the power of storytelling. Great stories exist, and the rest is confetti.